Let us look to the Lord in prayer, and I'm going to kneel. Our Father, which art in heaven, we thank you for this day that you have given us, Father. The first Sabbath, I believe, in 2024, by God's grace. And we're thankful and grateful, Father, for, and I say 2024, European year 2024. And um, we want to thank you, Father, and praise you for being in the number once again. And we're thankful and grateful, Father, for everyone who is here, Lord, and those that are on their way. We pray and bind the enemy and ask, Father, that you make a way for each and every one of them. We also, Father, want to ask your Holy Spirit to lead God and direct this study. We pray all of him and none of us. Father, we pray for your messenger, Lord. We pray that you use him in a mighty way. We thank you that all hearts and minds are clear to hear what thus saith the Lord. And we pray for full participation that your Holy Spirit will speak to each and every one of our hearts and that our lives will never be the same again. And Father, most of all, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who makes all of this possible. We thank you for it all and we praise you. It's in your precious son, Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen. To those who just joined, praise the Lord. Would anyone like to recite or read the fourth commandment? And if not, I am happy to. And it can be found in Exodus 20, verses 8 through 11. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, all that in them, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. And Father, we want to pray a special prayer for Brother Royce, Lord, who is not feeling well. We pray, Father, for his complete healing and restoration. As only you can, Lord, we ask you to strengthen his mind, body, soul, and that he will be used father to your glory as you see fit we thank you for it all father in jesus precious name we pray amen we will now have singing of our hymn day is dying in the west and for those who would like to sing along on mute this is coming from our time for singing hymnal hymn number 41 day is dying in the west Day is dying in the west, heaven is touching earth with rest. Wait and worship while the night sends her evening lamps alight through all the sky. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thee, heaven and earth are praising thee, O Lord most high. Lord of life beneath the dome of the universe, thy home. Gather us who seek thy face to the fold of thy embrace, for thou art not holy, 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 Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of thee, heaven and earth are praising thee, O Lord most high. While the evening shadows fall, heart of love unfolding all through the glory and the grace. Of the stars that veil thy face, our hearts ascend. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of thee. Heaven and earth are praising thee, O Lord most high. When forever from our sight, past the stars, the day, the night, Lord of angels on our eyes, let eternal morning rise and shadows in. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thee, heaven and earth are praising thee, O Lord most high. Amen. And Holy Sabbath, 
once again, everyone. Um, we will now have our healthy living segment, which for those who may be hearing this for the first time from our YouTube family and otherwise, our healthy living segments are God's prescription for healthful living. Third John 1 and 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. God's design for all mankind is that we live a life free from sin, which is only possible through a personal relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we know that sin brings on sickness and disease, and if left unchecked, leads to eternal death. We know that Jesus is our example. He's the blueprint. God's word calls him the pattern man. He's also Lord of the Sabbath, and he sanctifies us through his Sabbath. Only a holy people can worship a holy God. So... I always like to conclude by saying that Sunday is not the Bible Sabbath. God's seventh day Sabbath is his seal. And if we are not keeping his seventh day Sabbath and all of God's Ten Commandment moral law, as well as his natural laws, we cannot be sanctified. So with that, could someone tell us what are the eight laws of health? What are the eight laws of health? Praise the Lord. Brother Roy, you look like you want to want to say it. You want to. <laughs> hey, I let somebody else I'm in the car, but I'm coming. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The eight laws of health are air, sunlight, abstemiousness, rest, exercise, proper diet, the use of water and trust in divine power. And yes. that can that can be found on page 127 in the book Ministry of Healing, as well as in our Natural Remedies Encyclopedia on page 44. So that segues perfectly into our topic for this evening. This is going to be a three-part segment as is custom but it's going to be short in the interest of time. The topic is the Complete Health Message 7.0, God's Design for All Mankind. And the subtopic is something I found interesting since, you know, we, we talk about the eight laws of health. So I decided to Google, you know, we're into a new European year. And so I had Googled what are the, what are the top, unhealthiest um things you know we we know what the eight laws of health are what are the mm -hmm. what are the unhealthiest things that people are doing and and i found a website that had a list of top 10 unhealthy habits and these are things that stress out our body and mind and of course we know if we're not, if we don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, we can be doing, have the best of habits and still be lost. But right. um, the thing with with this list that I'm about to go through, and, and we're just going to hit the, the first three and then open it up to any comments from the group and we'll pick back up. But I found it interesting as I was reading through these habits that a lot of these things people probably don't even realize are contribute to stress. And so it's very, very um, important that we understand the root cause, the root cause, and then we can course correct. And for those who just joined, our healthy living segment topic is top 10 unhealthy habits top 10 unhealthy habits. Um, number one, poor nutrition. And yeah. I think we can all, you know, agree um, that's, you know, d proper diet is, does anybody remember which law of health proper diet is? 
and the order does matter. And I'm cheating. I'm looking in my book. It's number six. So okay. poor nutrition made number one on this list. And again, this is a worldly source. So we always have to consider the source. But that that definitely would align with what we know from the eight laws of health. Number two, poor sleep. When it comes to the eight laws of health, does anybody know where that where that aligns with the eight laws? Which law that violates? Rest. Amen. What number, Brother Roy? Do you know uh -huh. offhand? No, no. Wait a minute. Let me see. Number four. four. Is it four? I'm sorry. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And just think, Brother Roy, the fourth commandment, the fourth law of health. Rest. Amen. And what is the Sabbath thing? Rest. Yes, praise the Lord. Praise oh. the Lord. And then number three, we'll conclude on. Um, this one was shocking to me. And again, we always have to consider the source, but the fact that this made number three on the top 10 speaks to the direction that that we are headed or not necessarily headed We're we're in it. <laughs> um, but number three is excessive screen time. So if you think about people, a lot of people's jobs, a large number of people work at have desk jobs where they work in front of a computer. That's, I spend pretty much if I, if I don't have a computer, I may, I could pretty much go home if, you know, based on the job I do day to day. And then we also think about cell phone technology. And after people get home watching TV, that's all these things fall under screen time. And so this, this website is putting that in the category of it, it made number three on the top 10 list of unhealthiest habits that contribute to stressing out the body and the mind. So um, I, my, my takeaway really from this, we, we've learned from God's word that the Bible says, I have hidden my word, I have hidden thy word in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And so we know anything in excess is sin. Yeah. And praise right. God. Thank you, Brother Roy. And and so what we're seeing here from, you know, that these these top three have in common, poor nutrition, poor sleep, excessive screen time. Not only is it, and poor nutrition can be too much or too little. And so we know God brings balance. God brings a perfect harmony in everything we do when it comes to serving God and and um, walking in oneness with Jesus. And so yes. temperance comes to mind with um, these top three, because, yes. you know, again, all these laws are commingled and inter intertwined. And we really do have to rely on Jesus to lead us every step of the way, because we can get off and it doesn't take right. much to get, off track and get out of sync with our Amen. routine and and we do need we should all have a routine but at this time i will open it up to any comments or questions from the group well i'd like to make this comment you know with the excessive screen time i think a lot of people are guilty of that and like I said, it may not even know it. Everything is governed by these computers and these devices that people are looking for information on, even for their work. And then sometimes the children aren't getting enough sleep because of this excessive screen time. So you know, we really need to look closely at that one, I think. A amen. Amen. Thank you for that, Brother Roy. Right. Any Anyone else? Anyone else? And if there are no other comments, this concludes our healthy living segment. 
and I am very excited. I'm always excited, but I'm very excited this evening to um, turn it over to, and I'm always hesitant to say who I'm turning it over to, but I believe Brother Wayne is leading out this evening by God's grace. Amen. We're going to let the uh, Holy Spirit lead out as he as he always does. The Bible says, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, will come, he will lead and guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but to whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I've said unto you. We're going to start with a word of prayer, brethren, by the Holy Spirit. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this beginning of another Sabbath day, the end of another preparation day. This the first week of another year. We thank you for all of your blessings. We pray that you will help us to be qualified to receive every one of them and will accept and receive the blessings you have for us this whole year, this day, this moment, this hour. We pray that the Holy Spirit will indeed come and bless us this day. Renew in our hearts the right spirit. Clean us up, O oh Lord. Prepare us for the second coming of Jesus and give us your peace. And we thank you, Lord, for your great presence and your power, your kingdom, and your glory. Bless everyone here listening. I pray that you will open up our ears and hearts to hear the truth. Speak, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray and thank you. Amen. Yes. You know, brother, and brother, I was, um, Lord, have you thinking about, uh, you know, a new year just began. You know, are you showing me this there? I think it's in Review and Harold and Big Controversy. The Lord says this to a servant. He said, men may be church members and may apparently work earnestly, performing a round of duty from year to year and yet be unconverted. They may write in defense of Christianity, yet be unconverted. They may preach pleasing, entertaining sermons, yet be far from Christ as, as regards religious experience. They may be exalted to the pinnacle of human greatness, never, but yet never have experienced the transforming grace, truth, which will change the character and which has entered the intellect, but has not come into the inner sanctuary of the, of the soul. We need more than an intellectual belief in the truth. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. We need to just settle in the truth, not in a lie. Amen. But the Lord had it on my mind here about the papacy. And we'll, we'll be looking at Second uh, Thessalonians chapter 2 and also uh, Revelation um, 13. You know, we, you know we'll be looking at Revelation 14. And uh, the Lord will, he'll show and lead us. But the subject was about the papacy. And prompted when the Lord had me look, look at uh, it's a, it's a uh, online church in Alabama called uh, State Line Church, Seventh day Adventist Church. And they had a subject about the papacy. And, um, you know, we know that papacy means papa or father. But, but there's something, there's just something different about this, this papacy here, as we know. And um, well, so, well, well, let's listen to this. Um, we know that uh, Alexander the Great, he stated, he said, I have conquered many, many nations, but I could not conquer self. And so that's, that's, that's the basic characteristic of the papacy, not being able to conquer self. He, he said, like the wicked one said, I will ascend into heaven. I will, I will exalt my throne 
for the stars of God. I will sit also on the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. And I will be like the most high. That's what the wicked one said in Isaiah 12, 14, 12. And so, but that's the attitude that we have sometimes. It says here, present truth, December 14, 1893. We need not expend all our in- indignation on the Pope of Rome. Isn't that surprising? A Protestant papacy is no better than a Roman papacy. Wherever there is the exaltation of man above God, there is the papacy. And all errors extend from that. And what makes us the papacy is is where we put self or someone in place of or above God. And that's the truth. True Protestantism is not just anti-Catholicism. True Protestantism, it is loyalty to God. And then the Lord said in uh, Joel, I think it's Joel 2, 1, he said, Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in mine holy mountain, and let all, let all the inhabitants of the earth tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. And the Lord, the Lord was showing me this today. I was in a certain office today, and he was showing showing me this. It's nothing new, but he was showing me that that uh, this was Genesis chapter one. Somewhere in Genesis chapter one, the Lord said, "Let us make man in our own image." Amen. And we know we know that there is that there is what's called the image of the beast. And the Lord was telling me, He said, "There are going to be two images in the end." In the end, after that Sunday law, uh, National Sunday law, it's going to be two. It's going to be those of us we pray and believe who will be have been made in the likeness of God through Jesus Christ by the Holy Spirit. We will bear His image, and then there will be others who who will bear the image of the papal beast. Two images. But we need, the Lord has has come in the flesh, lived a sinless life, gone back to heaven. We've gone to prepare a a place for us. And so, it says here, let me see one. Life, life unto the image of the beast. It says here. Well, maybe, maybe we should go to um, let's go to Second Thessalonians two, and uh, because that Second Thessalonians chapter two, that's one of that's one of Brother Roy's favorite texts. There, I think I should let him him read half of it, and Sister um, whoever whoever will wants to read the rest of it. Um, so that Second Thessalonians two talks about the the um, the, the papacy, and which is not who we want to be, be made like unto. We want to place Jesus first. He is to be first in our lives, and the image of the beast. Anyway, let's 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 read let's read uh. Brother Roy, could you start for us in Second Thessalonians chapter two? This is the, the papacy. This is the papacy, pap- papacy chapter about the papacy. Second Thessalonians chapter two. We're there, yes, Amen. Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse one, and it reads: yes. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto Him that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand, that no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first and that a man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalts himself above all that is called God. Go ahead, brother. Well, you know, it's just so much said here that, that 
we we we're in that same that same place, same same condition that the Thessalonian Thessalonians mm -hmm. were. You know, they had loved ones who died. Yes, sir. But they weren't sure. They weren't sure about what what happened. Where have they gone? Great, that's and, that, right. and that's one of the two final issues that's, that's facing us today: Sabbath or Sunday worship, mm -hmm. and the state of the dead. But the Lord told them not to be soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter, as from us is that the day of Christ is at hand. See, we know that Jesus is coming again. And when he comes with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, we know that these, these are the truthful sayings of God. Amen. We know that this is, this is what will happen. But the wicked one will come. He will come, not in beauty, but he will come with more deception. Mm -hmm. Because, look, the whole world is all set up for the coming of Christ. And can you imagine how it will happen when the, when the wicked one comes to impersonate Christ, saying that, saying that I'm, I'm come, I'm here. And people be crying, Jesus has come. People, we look, we're looking for some help. We got, we got places and people being bombed, people being shot up, any and everywhere in the world, school, in stores, in homes. All over the world, trouble all over the world. But we do need Jesus to come. We need him to come. But we need to be prepared for him to come. We don't want to believe a lie. When Jesus comes, everybody will know. Every eye will see him. But he will not land on the earth. He will be up in the sky. That's why he said, let no man deceive you by any means. You can continue on, Brother Roy. Who opposed, in verse 4? Yes, who opposed and exalted himself above all that is called God. Or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember you not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now you know what withholded that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now let it will let until he be taken out of the way. Verse 8, and then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Number 9, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, but all power and signs and lying wonders. Verse 10, and with all undeceivableness of unrighteousness and them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. Verse 11, and for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Verse 12, that they all might be oh. damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure brother, brother. in unrighteousness. Now, what is what is this lie that's being talked about here by the Lord in, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, that they might, that they might, that they should believe a lie? He said, and well, this cause oh, God shall send them a strong. Yes, sir. To, who's able to, to expound on that one? Well, one of the things that they believe is right now that we've actually, when you say the fourth commandment, most of them believe that it's Sunday. That's, and we know that the, the Bible says, the word says that it is Saturday. So, a lot of them believe that right now to this day. All Sabbath. Yeah. And 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 so that's the that's that that's the process of turning turning away their ears from the truth. Yes, amen. That it should, that it should believe a lot. Amen. That's right. And and that, that that that's the falling away that the Lord is, is has described in um in, in Revelation. Falling yes, away. Falling away. Falling away. Hmm. And and you know, you know the condition of man because of this lie that people believe. A lot of them have fell away because of this, and, and they're still in that process. Some of them right now because they hadn't been, they hadn't learned the truth, and some of them resist the truth. Amen. Right 
Yes, yes. And amen. And we know that this process, this process of um, the Bible says, for this cause, rejecting this truth, God shall send them strong delusion. But we know that it's not it's not an actual fact that God will send them strong delusion. It's just that people refuse to believe the truth. Mm-hmm. And it's like it's like when we the truth is light. When we when we reject light, then we're what's coming. What comes next? Dark. When we reject Dark. light, darkness. 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 Amen. 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 Also, brother Wayne, uh, um, yeah. in, in verse three, where it says, hmm. it says, except there come a falling away. And so that implies that they were once standing, they were once in the faith, and they fell fell out of out of it. And so that's that's right. key as well, because you know, let he that thinketh he stand take heed lest he fall. Right. Amen. 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 Yes. That fall is something else now. I guess you can still hold your place here in Second Thessalonians, but let's take a look at our Revelation 14 right now, also, because it's a, it's a it's a marvelous message here, also in Revelation 14, which which is um, parallel to to Second uh, Thessalonians 2 in many aspects here. Um, in Revelation 14. The Bible, 14 and, um, I agree we got to read 6, 7, but in, especially in, fall, in verse 8, talks about the falling away, as it were. But this, this message, Revelation 14, verses 6 and 7, is one of the most, if not the most, most powerful truth on earth. And we know that Jesus, the Bible says in uh, Malachi, Chapter 3, verse 1, Malachi 3. In verse 1, he said, The Lord says, Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom ye seek, when he said, I will send my messenger, he's talking about John the Baptist, but the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, whom ye delight in. Now the message of the covenant here is Jesus, and we 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 are given three angels messages in Revelation chapter fourteen, but the chief and principal messenger. Now we know that that angels represent messengers or a messenger with a and with a message, but Jesus is the one that started the third angel's message or the three angels messages. Jesus is the one. He is the messenger of the covenant Amen. Jesus did and he's the one that started started this message this uh this message of of uh, of, of the third third angel as it were or three angels and um let, let's just we're going to talk about hold on one for one moment here uh in in uh general, general conference bulletin March 31st 1902 I believe it is a lady or person that asks, I desire I desire to, to notice the movement for this time. So the question is asked, well, what is it? It is brought to view in Revelation 10, 14, and 18, also in Ezekiel, Daniel, Habakkuk, and in many other places. The threefold messages of Revelation 14 are more than a myth, more than a than than, than a myth, as it were. Or, it is one a, a great gospel truth, as it were. Two, a great body of believers. Three, and a great gospel missionary movement. That great that great gospel truth is God's message to the world. Two, that great body of believers are those whom the truth saves. And three, the great gospel missionary movement is proclamation of the truth to the world. Mm-hmm. By those whom it saved. It says you cannot think of this message without, without seeing its truth, stirring men and women to action. You see them tremendously in earnest 
you see them going from place to place, and their message is represented by an angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth. Mm-hmm. And it, it is a people, in, in conclusion, it, it is a people that goes throughout the length and breadth of the land and to the uttermost parts of the earth to take possession of the kingdom of God. And that's what God has called us to do with this power, this powerful message that came at the conclusion of the 2300 day prophecy or 2300 year prophecy. This third angel's message came with power and glory and honor. And so, for the hour of his judgment has come. And I saw another angel, Revelation 14, 6, 7, and 8. Sister Michelle, could you read that please? 6, 7, and 8. Amen. Of, uh, Revelation 14, 6, 7, and 8 at least. Amen. And it reads, Please. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come. And worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. Verse 8. And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Okay, now this, this brings us down down to the time in the 1840s, right here in the Bible. The Lord brings us down to that time of the 1840s, where there was a great gospel missionary movement going on. William Miller was crying aloud. Very not. Mm-hmm. He didn't have the, he didn't he didn't have the truth as it were of the of the Sabbath, but he had the truth that Jesus was coming again, and he cried aloud and spared not, and called people to prepare for the second coming of Christ. Mm-hmm. And but that message was rejected. That first angel's message was just read by Sister Michelle. That message was rejected, and. You see, this this message called for the world to worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of water. That's right. There's not a call to worship him that made of all Sabbath. That's right. Amen. It's a call to worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of water. And then there followed another angel in verse 8, saying Babylon is fallen. Babylon was, was those churches who rejected this message, the first angel's message. Mm-hmm. It, as it said here in, um, what does it say? That, uh, in the Spirit of Prophecy, that um, the word follow, you see, because verse 8 and there followed another angel. So this angel, this, this second angel, is following the first. And so these 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 two messages go together as one. Mm-hmm. And and we notice it says, it says notice here in the Greek word followed, which which means uh, following as a consequence. You see, mm-hmm. yeah. And there in Revelation fourteen eight, and there followed another angel. Well, this angel is following the first angel because of the consequences of the rejection of the first angel's message. Mm-hmm. Now, here has it's written like this. It says, uh, first angel's message bears the everlasting gospel to preach. Mm-hmm. And the, the rejection of this message Uh, the rejection of this message causes mm-hmm. a consequence. Yeah, amen. And because of the rejection of the first angel's message, as announced by the second angel in Revelation 14 8, mm-hmm. and because of the consequences of such rejection, as announced by the second angel, mm-hmm. that which, which caused further consequences. So these consequences call for. The third angel to come mm-hmm. with, with his loud voice, mm-hmm. proclaiming 
his dreadful warning against the terrible events which resulted as the double consequence of the rejection of the first angel's message. Amen. You see, uh, see the rejection of that first angel's message, all these, all these consequences occurred. And so Babylon is fallen, is fallen. And, and so the first, those who still believe in Sunday, the churches are still in a falling condition. Yeah. You see, this falling, falling is, is a progressive fall. That's right. And this fall, this fall condition is, is continuing on right now. Well, you know, yeah. when I yeah. heard that thing, Brother Wayne, uh, it did bring me to right now, you know, put it in practicality. You know, when you mm -hmm. say, uh, uh, when when you were reading that by verse 6, I saw another another angel trying to miss him, having the everlasting gospel preach unto everyone. He didn't leave no one out. You know what I mean? So right, me, right. we're without an excuse at this point. Could we agree there? And oh, no question about it. Then the consequences are the condition that man is in now because of the re, you know the re, resisting to follow that message that these angels are teaching. It went one, two, three, and all same message. Because it's about making sure we follow that everlasting gospel. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Right. Also, I that and, and, go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead, Brother Wayne. No, you go ahead. You go ahead. No, and one other quick comment as, as Brother Roy was speaking, it occurred to me that you know, we're always talking about and the Bible teaches us there's two classes of people. But um, mm -hmm. when it comes to in the light of the three angels message, there's two classes of people, those that are proclaiming the message. So uh, mm -hmm. that, that to me, that really, really brings it home. You know, you're either proclaiming this message or oh, you're, you're to your yeah. point, brother, brother Wayne, or you are being you are subject to the consequences of rejecting yeah. the message. So that's, that's right. That to me really brings it home because you can't, there's no in between. No middle. Amen. Well, Sister, Sister Michelle, you, you just, uh, the grace of God just brought to my mind. Yes, God gave this message to, to the United States of America mm -hmm. to preach to preach this, this uh, third angel's message or three angel's messages. He gave it to America to preach. But but America refused to preach this message. And right. but but don't you see that in in Reve it's even in Revelation fifteen, Revelation fifteen is brought out very clearly regarding the even the, the first plague or the plague. The plagues yes. will come also upon those who knew this truth of the three angels. That's we right. Of, 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 that, of the two sons of the Lord. But, 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 but refuse to preach it. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean they were, and, they were, and the consequences of the those who knew the truth and, and refused to preach it, yeah. the consequences mm -hmm. is the reception of the seven last plagues, if they still live at that time, of course. Isn't that something? Amen. Right. Wow. Well, you know, even that that you're talking about now, this is so important that this message has to be taken into all the world before he returns. The Bible teaches this. And then, you know, the mm -hmm. importance of this is if we do what these angels are saying, the first, second, third angel message, these messages, then we'll do well. But now when you when you when you explain it, most people they they don't understand the extent of what is really going on because they haven't been taught this this real message. But you know, you look at First uh, Timothy four. It talks about Paul. is talking about this. He said, "I charge thee, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at His appearing in His kingdom." Right? He said, "Watch what it says, verse two. You know what it is. Preach the word. Be instant. Amen. Preach what word. The word we're talking about now." Is it be instant in yeah. season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine? 
And it says in verse three, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But watch this, but but after their own lust, they shall heap up themselves teachers having itching ears, right? <clears throat> mm -hmm. so, so this is a time right now that is so it's so uh, relevant, it's so important that we make sure we uh, servants, uh, God's servants, his people, make sure that we get this everlasting gospel to everyone, everyone. Give, mm -hmm. If they don't want it, we, we can say we did, we offered it, and we tried to give it to them, so and just keep it, keep progressing. I like that word progressing. That word progression means to keep going forward because time isn't stopping for anyone, anybody. You know what I mean? Let's hold it Sabbath, Paul. I do have a question. I hope it is not false. The three angels' message for one to, you know, say proclaim, you know, I saw an angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth. For those of us that, um, understand this how well should one know god wow. how wow. well <laughs> you know how well should one know god i mean in other words if i'm a if someone come to me and, and proclaim this message to me okay. how well should mm -hmm. i have no how well should i know god to receive this three angels message I don't know if they're making it. Make, it makes sense. I understand the question. Do you mind if I just chime in and make a comment, brother Wayne? There. Yes, sir. Please. Now, how can you talk about him if you don't know him? For example, how can you teach what you, you hadn't been taught? See, that's why it's so very relevant. It's very important that this message be given to the people. Because that's, that's how much is needed so that they would know him even more. Because if you look at it, in John, what it talks about in the beginning was what? The Word. And the Word was yeah. with God. John 1. And the Word was God. He, he would not go against his own Word. Amen. He said, if he said it, like Amen. he said in the book of Isaiah, he will do it. So to me, if you know and study his Word and get to know him, in and through by his word and have a relationship with him by his spirit as well, then you will know him, for example. But if not, you can't, you don't know him. You see what I'm saying? There's a, a vast distinction between one that had learned or don't know and one that thinks he knows. The Bible says in Romans they have a form of godliness, but hadn't obtained God and they're not. Amen. Now, if you don't mind me asking this one, is so I understand, we understand the strange message. How do we how do we give it to the folks that don't know God? I mean, in other words, what I'm saying, do I mm -hmm. give in the three angels message or do I present God so that they can, I don't know, know him as the creator? Uh uh, you know, you know yeah. I, I think about this here, brother, brother Tony. Uh, you know, if I was un unconverted, unsaved, you know, hadn't been born again or, and been changed, for example, the first thing I know that I need is to first of all have a will, a desire to do so. You see, so will let come. I have to want her, my life to be changed. I have to want Jesus. I have to want him to be in my life, at the head of, being the head of my life. Be my savior. So how do I do that? I have to get born again. Amen. And mm -hmm. at that time, it says, when you get born again, he does what? He comes to live with you on the inside of you, right? Our spirit. So now, and then you keep working, studying his word, and and then his spirit bringing you, leading you into all truth. You get to know him even more. But until you get, just like he told Nicodemus in John 3, you must be born again. That's the only way. I, I guess what I was getting at, we can proclaim this three angels message to any and everybody, regardless of what level they are at on their understanding of God. 
because I do believe this message. In other words, you don't have to know God fully for you to capture this truth. Right. Amen. Yes, sir. Because you know, because listen, this word, Brother Tony itself, when I said I gave that that example from John 1, it's the word itself is God. Everything he made, he made, and when he, he spoke it, it came to, came into existence. Amen. And think about that. When you look at, uh, I'm so glad Brother Wayne brought this emphasis out with this uh, for, this, this this message right here about these angels. Okay, when you look at, uh, uh, let's just look back briefly at uh, 6 again, and, uh, Revelation 14, 6. Let's look at that briefly again, just one part of it. And, and it's going to help, help. It helps me to, to when he brought it out earlier to look at it for what what it's really worth. Okay, are you there, Brother Tony? Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah, look below the part where it says, the first part, then I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, right? And we understand that right now, I thought I spoke to this, and I was, I was as a visitor of the church, doing it right after my aunt was buried. What are we working for now, all of us? Chris, what are we working for? I mean, we come to church, we come together, fellowship, worship. What are we working for? What are we working for? That's a heavy question. I don't know how to answer that one, brother. I'm just saying, just what are you, it's not right off the, right off the tip of your head. I was just thinking, what are we working for now? Yes. Okay, now, keep, keep that in mind with Sister Michelle. We're working for eternal life. Now, look at the rest of this part of this verse 6. It says, what did they have? They had the everlasting, was having the everlasting gospel to preach. The everlasting what? Gospel. What is the gospel? Good news. Good news. God's word, right? Mm -hmm. See, that's so powerful. It's a habit. They had it. The everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on what? The earth. That's where we're at right now. Now, this word is so powerful and magnificent that the angel was brought, it, they brought to preach on this earth. And he don't want us to be deceived at all. He wants us to get it. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That 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 just blesses me. Wow! Can you imagine how awesome that really is? He was he got an angel. Angels. We're talking about the three angels' message. But this first angel, I, that, that just gets me right there. It says, and I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach. Having it. He got it. To preach to who? In, unto them that dwell on the earth. And then it, and it gave a specificity. It says, specifically, into every nation and kindred and tongue and people. Who did it leave out? No one. It didn't leave anyone. And it didn't leave nobody out, right? Anybody out at all. Mm -hmm. So that's to me, that's amazing. And then it told you in verse nine, saying, and the third angel followed them, saying, follow all eight, they fought one, followed the other. It was just one message. Mm -hmm. What did he say? And if any man, he said with a loud voice, if any man worship who? The beast and his image. Mm -hmm. And them consequences you're talking about, Brother Wayne? Yes, sir. And receive a mark in his forehead or in his hand, and ten will tell you what it'll do. The same shall drink mm -hmm. of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented as an individual. Are those individuals with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb? Consequences, right, brother? Wayne? That's right. But anyway, I thought how I just thought that was so amazing to know that these angels, this angel, the first one, is praying this, preaching this everlasting gospel. It doesn't change. Amen. His word is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Amen. Amen. I have a quick comment after you, Brother Wayne. Go ahead. Go ahead, Sister Michelle. No, uh, the only thing I was going to add is just the word doesn't change, but the trumpet must have a certain sound. And 
one thing that I'm all that I always bring to mind is if someone handed us, you know, some music, a sheet music, and mm -hmm. play a, a certain song, you That's know, pick any song, and we played the other, we played a different song, but we were given the mm -hmm. sheet music. It's all the same notes. It's just different harmonies, different um, arrangements, That's but fair. it's a certain sound. And so what I believe where the power comes in that God has ordained a certain sound that when that sound is bellowing and begins to then be heard, then people can come out of these right. things and not not fall prey, Brother Wayne, to, to all these consequences. Because that's right. really to the question Brother Roy asked. We're working for eternal life, but we don't want to, we want everybody. Right. We want to, we want the family of faith to come with and us. You know, so that's and you know, part Sister of the work as well. Right. And you know what, Sister Michelle, mm -hmm. when you look in the book and John, it says, when he said, I am the good shepherd. He said, my sheep know my voice. Like you said, the sound. My sheep know my voice. Amen. And I believe that. He was talking about good news and, you know, good news got to be, and we said the gospel, but good news is present truth. Present truth. But at yeah. times, Amen. Because the good news for Christ, when Christ was born, was until your Savior is born. Yeah. The good news of Christ's resurrection is resurrection. Resurrection. Good news, yeah. good news for Amen. us is the message. That's good news. That's the God we like, you know, we say the good news is the gospel, which is true. But the good news yeah. must be specific for a specific time. And so when Brother Tony asked that question about how do we know God? If we turn to briefly to John 17, uh, verse 3, for real quickly, and, and also in mm -hmm. verse 4 as well, verse part of verse mm -hmm. 4, this this is what it means to know God. Okay. John 17, 3 and 4. And I'll read it with there. Amen. It says, and this is life eternal, that they might know the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. Mm -hmm. So to know God to have eternal life is to know God and the Son whom he yeah. has sent. So to the law and to the testimony. Mm -hmm. And then by doing that, then only can we glorify God on earth. As Jesus said, I've already glorified thee. Then when we lay down our armor and Christ came back and that's the Son of passed and we've been went to the test, then truly we have glorified mm -hmm. God if we pass that test. Amen. You know, you know, you know, Amen. brother, praise God, Pastor Jones and Brother Biles, I tell you, you brought up a subject that I may know him. That was supposed to be the subject here tonight. But then I didn't know what it would be, and to be honest with you, you know, with the Holy Spirit work. The Holy Spirit is he sure is leading out here. Praise God. Now, having the everlasting gospel, yeah. Also, in Romans, Romans 1, 16, 17, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it, the gospel, is the power of God unto salvation. Salvation means to be made free from sin. And so having the everlasting gospel, don't you know that the one who's flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel, is mm -hmm. one who, who, who is progressively, if not totally, being made free from sin. Amen. You see, because the gospel is what destroys sin. This person has the everlasting gospel to preach. Yes, it is. And, mm -hmm. I, and, and, and I know better. I know the Lord reminds me all the time. He said, son, you know, you can't go out there in the field and tell the people with this gospel. When, <laughs> when, you, when, when you go out and, and, and sin, you, can't, you just can't do it. Conscience won't even allow you to do it. Right. It, it won't happen. I'm not saying I'm not saying I'm sending. And also, the Bible brought out another point. How can you tell this to to the common person? One brother was given a book this morning, going into a building, didn't know him. This brother received this book, and it's probably 45 minutes later. I saw him in the bathroom. We had to study in the bathroom, and the Lord had me tell him. I said, "Man, you know, the Lord just told me about the image of the beast." 
And don't you know that we're, and, and, uh, he was told who the beast was and is, and who the is is. And we have to, we have to have, we have this everlasting gospel to preach. But this brother understood, he understood about the image. He understood about the beast. He understood about the Sabbath. He understood all that. You know, this was a common man. Praise God, I'm telling you. And but, but see, we don't think that people will understand these things. Well, this, I'll tell you this, uh, express my biasness. This brother, he didn't look like he would understand. You understand what I'm saying? In my own biasness, he, he didn't look like he would. But this brother understood, listened and understood, held up his wife. She was waiting for him to come out of the bathroom. My wife was waiting for me to come out, but, but we stayed in there and had an excellent discussion on this same subject about the image of the beast and that Christ is he's in the most holy place, restoring mm-hmm. us into his own image. I'm telling you, ain't nothing like this truth. And, right. and but see, this truth, truth is a purifying truth, though. This truth prepares us for the second coming of Christ. Not only others, but it prepares us for the second coming of Christ, and it prepares us for the final test. But as I learned, listening to the other uh, brothers, the National Sunday Law, just like, just like we learned that everyone who enters into the kingdom of heaven will have the seal of God upon them, everyone. And also we know that no one is saved until they are sealed. Amen. That That's makes right. it so clear, doesn't it? It's Amen. clear. It's clear as it gets. But no one is saved until they're sealed. But see, this, this, this one is just so special about this message, though. And, you know, I didn't mean to get on this message like, like we're on it now. I didn't, but see, praise God, it's not about us, see. Then, then I have a painful attitude placing yes, myself sir. before God. Mm-hmm. You see. But praise God. Praise God praise for the God. Holy Spirit. Yeah. And, and oh, that I mean, know him. The Bible says in, uh, what is it, First John 2? He that says, I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. In him. Right. So... So we, we, and the Lord was telling me this, you know, especially this new year coming in. He, he was pressing upon my heart, son, you just, you just need to know me. Mm-hmm. You know, you just need to know me. You can know, you know, man, as, as was said earlier, let's see, man may, may be churchgoers, as it were. Yes. And may perform around the duties from year to year and yet be unconverted. That's right. And then okay. may, may be exalted to the pinnacle of human greatness, but never... Never have uh, received the, yes. uh, the work of grace that transformed the character. Such That's ones right. have been deceived by his connection and familiarity with the sacred truths of the gospel, which have reached the intellect, but have not been brought into the inner sanctuary of the soul. You see, yes. we into the meat of the gospel. We we mm-hmm. we into this is this is the meat of the gospel. This is present truth, and so. We need to have this truth by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come in the inner sanctuary of our mm-hmm. soul. You know, because, because it will come out. It will, it will come out. We can't hide this word. This word will come out. It will shine out. This word will be lived out. Because the image of the beast, the image is the living image, though. You see, we learn about all the other images, you know, that exist in the Old even then. All the other images being made. But this image, the image of the beast, is a living image. And this image lives in peace. But we need, we need the true and living God. Him, you know, his character, to dwell in us richly. That, that I may know him. The Bible says in Philippians 3, 8, 9, that, that I may know him, being found in him. Not having our own righteousness, which is of the law. But that which is through the faith of Christ. The righteousness which is of God by faith that we may know Him and the power of His resurrection, fellowship of His sufferings, and being made conformable unto His death. Amen. That's why we need to we need to die daily. And regarding the Sunday Sunday law issue, though, and I believe this though, everybody has to go through a trial, and if everybody everybody must be sealed before we go into heaven, everybody Amen. must have had some semblance of the National Sunday Law test mm-hmm. upon them before being, being sealed. You understand what I'm saying? Before 
before dying. You understand what I'm saying there? So that, that, that test is going to be some kind of a test. Some kind of a test like never before. That test. But, but it won't be that test. But, 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 but it will be a great test. The greatest test that, the, that people have known who have died. Great test. Brother so, Wayne, uh, you, you asked for that page number. That's in uh, 7, 8, 9, 6, and 9, paragraph 3, and 9, 70. About the CM. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that with me. Praise God. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Praise God. And so let me, let me start talking about because, man, you, Lord, bless blessing everybody bring some excellent points here. Let me, let me give, give us some more points, brother. These, I mean, ain't nothing like this message, though. We would be falling when, when this message is, is not, not being preached by us who have been so enlightened by this great light of truth. You say that, brother Wayne, that you know, we built out, when you built on the rock, the right foundation, which is Jesus, you know what this is all about. You know how important it really is. It's like to me, I yeah. tell people, you, you, yeah. you, you don't have to believe me. Believe him. Have faith in Jesus. Learn it. Get to know him. He said, take, he said, take my yoke upon you. Take my, and learn me. So my yoke is easy. My burden is light. Find out for yourself. Yeah. Right. I challenge you to do that. I mean, it's up to you, but do it. And then you'll know who he really is and how good and awesome he really is. So that, that's the way I look at that, right? Jesus, I mean, you know, I think about even when he told Peter on the rock, Peter, I'm going to be on my church. And the gates of hell won't be real against it. Sometimes we have to ask ourselves, mm -hmm. but he's standing on the rock, for example. Amen. Also, yeah. Brother Wayne, I see here a, you know, when we talk about that I may know him, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. we all have in our minds, we all have what we, you know, our concept of holiness or what have you. Um, and mm -hmm. I'm just talking yeah. now, just individuals. It's, it's not mm -hmm. until we really get to know Jesus that, yeah we then these concepts and all these you know all the this baggage we bring with us when we come to him that we can then let go of and he you know he he takes it in and then gives us renews our minds and then we're able to walk out all these things and and it becomes a beautiful sweet smelling savor unto you know and i think about the church of laodicea yeah uh, the bible describes as wretched naked miserable and and is it blind but blind and naked amen yes. and so those are pretty strong words to say that these are people that claim to be the closest to god and to know him best you know brother and sister Something happened this week that, that I don't want to not let pass without bringing to our attention. And most of us probably heard it already, uh, that the Pope excommunicated this priest. And because during one of the Mass, this Italian priest called him the anti-Pope. <laughs> and, he, and he excommunicated him. Now listen, if you, only one word miss Antichrist. So if, if God is waking people up, and showing them what's going on, how much more should we be about preaching this the message? Who reveals who the Antichrist really is? Amen. But there's a Italian pope in the, in the mass taught him to be called an anti-pope, and we know he's the Antichrist, the Antichrist. There's many Antichrists, but he's the Antichrist. Wow. And he, and he chose to even 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 if if it would be to to to, to die for the. Word of God, the testimony of Jesus Christ. Wow, what a, what a broad statement and movement. And I just want, I'm, I'm just impressed. If you just, can just pause for about a few seconds here for, for a word of prayer. This is not the benediction. This is just a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this marvelous message of mercy and truth that you are giving us. Continue to speak to our hearts that we may know him. Jesus. Yes. Jesus. Jesus' name we pray by the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. 
we don't, you know, the word of God, he said that his, he said, my word will not return unto him board, but will accomplish that which he pleases yeah. and prosper in the thing where he sent it. We just need to need to receive the word of God. Amen. Wow. Then, then we'll be clothed with his righteousness. We won't be found naked. Mm-hmm. And we won't be found without own, having our own righteousness. Right. But we will be found clothed, clothed fully. Because by the grace of God, we, we, we have been able and enabled to know him. So we don't want to, want to hear those words, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. We want to hear, come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Come. That's what we want to hear. And that's why he's calling us now. He said, come. Come yeah. unto me. Oh, wow. What a, and, and his power in the word. His power in that word says, it says come. Power enough to cause us to come to him. But when we reject that word, when we reject that word, that's another fall. Mother. When we don't come. But Jesus is calling us on, the, on this phone tonight. He's calling us and all those who have listened, who are listening and who will listen. He's calling yes, us. Tell us. He's telling us. He's telling us with a loud voice, come, and to some with a soft voice, come. But moreover, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a voice of love, though, and it's a voice full of power saying, come, power to cause us to come to him and never depart again from him. That's, the word, that's what we want to hear. Come. Wow. He gave us ears to hear. Can you imagine what it would be like not to be able to hear? You know, I mean, not to be able, just don't have the ability to hear. But there have been some who didn't have the ability to hear, but yet they heard the word of God. So we'd be able to enter in through the gates into the city. Those pearly gates. Those pearl, and, and that pearl, again, represents, it, it represents the extent of righteousness called forth by sin. That's what pearl, pearly, pearls mean. Wow. But we know that there's an, there an inexhaustible fund of per, perfect righteousness at the, at the golden altar. Hallelujah. Inexhaustible, inexhaustible fund of perfect righteousness for us, for each of us. Enough for everybody. Enough righteousness of Christ through his blood. Wow. And that's what we need today. That's why he says come. When we know that we cannot, we cannot cleanse ourselves for, for our unrighteousness. And therefore, God the Father uh, presents unto us, the faith, gives unto us the faith of Jesus, with, which, which, which presents to our view a fountain filled, fountain of, of righteousness filled with blood, as it were. Praise God. But so we just need to take a closer look at Jesus. We need to know him. Amen. And his power, his power to save us. But we just can't do it. But he can. Jesus can. And he says we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Wow. And we know he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or even think. Can you imagine yeah. that he's able to do above right. all that we even ask or, or that we can even think? Praise God. Is there, is there any any um any more comments or questions? I love Elder Bowers' questions. <laughs> Praise <laughs> God. I mean that brother. Man. Praise God. Praise God for every one of you. You know, comments, input. Oh, praise God. The Lord, the Lord has surely delivered tonight. He He has delivered His marvelous word. See, but that's so important, though, to have the Adelaide gospel to preach. It is, but it's a joy, though. It's a joy to 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 give this message to people. It is, amen. It's a joy, and it's not, and it's not a. Um, I just told, I told, I told one young lady. I said, I said, you know, as the Lord uses us here out in the field, it's, it's almost like breathing. Inhale and exhale. You know, it's just it's, right. it's, it's, it's right. just it's just it's just, it's just that, that that natural because it's Christ living in us, Holy Spirit inspiring us, the Father loving us. Mm-hmm. Oh. 
What a what's a what what's the way of life though? Wow. When I think about mankind myself, it just doesn't to know and read mm-hmm. and understand somewhat a God that is so different from any and everybody else. I always I heard a sermon one time about Mary Magdalene, who as we know she was a prostitute. Every man that she ran into, I don't care how good they seem to be, it always reverted to what they wanted. You know what I mean? They initially was in it for something for themselves until she met Jesus. Mm -hmm. And Jesus was the only man she ever knew that didn't want her body. Didn't Mm -hmm. want that and so just by standing like that just by jesus standing like that for her was a world that was open up to her to have hope in humanity through jesus christ and i know one time before i was talking to somebody and 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 stating that you know as a christian mm-hmm. how would you feel if i said something inappropriate to you. And the Mm -hmm. first thing she Mm -hmm. said was, you're only human. And Mm -hmm. that's the thing that um, we have to, through the grace of God, change. Because we're not only human. We are a new creature in Christ Jesus. You know? Mm-hmm. And I add something to that, brother Tony. Mm-hmm. With, with, yes. make a comment. You know, I was as I was listening to you. Now that's a good point that you brought out right there about we are supposed to, you know, be naming the name of Christ. We are supposed to be Christian in Christ like. You know, I was matter of fact, I think it was last week. I, I don't know if I share. I think I may have shared some of this with you all as part of a testimony. Um, you know, I was dealing with some issues with some people and. And I, I was just looking at, you know, how they would act out and act all, you know, being kind of, you know, out of proportion and everything, just being just mean and cruel, you know what I mean? And it's just like I was in there getting ready. And it's like the spirit itself was talking to me. Say, even though they do that, don't pay it no money. Huh? Don't look at them focus that. Be the example. Teach them the example. Show them the example. What? I'm thinking. About what? I mean, I'm I'm thinking. I'm trying to process this as is being given to me, right? And um, uh, and I when you said that, you know, a while ago about if somebody says something you that was wrong, and what you did, you said we just people. No, we're not just people. We're supposed to be Christ. We're supposed to. We named the name of Christ. We're supposed to be like Him. So I had to realize what it was saying to me. And so as I was talking to someone else. I actually brought up the same thing. I said, well, the Lord told me to show them the example. And the only way I can do that is I have to be walking with him and doing what he said. And I'm like, well, Amen, brother. Go ahead. Amen. Amen. You go no, I'm just saying brother. amen. Yeah, you know, amen. amen. That's, that's true. I tell you, that that, that mm-hmm. is that's something. It really is. You know, when doctors, they was telling me, I don't know how true it is, but it seems to be very true never researched it. They got people that get into the medical field and they rack up big bills going to school to become a doctor and all this. Yeah. And one of the things that they were sharing with me was the fact that they are also taught empathy. And it just surprised me that you had to be taught about empathy. And I say, all that money you all spending and all the debt you have, and I, and I understand your profession is, is good, but I just read the Bible and find that, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know. I, I agree with you. I, yeah. I've had my own personal doctors that I've been a student to just like I do someone out here, you know what I mean? And they, they, um, they really appreciate me being able to impart the word or just tell them the word. I mean, I got professionals, and I know you probably, and you all have as well in your travel have professionals that they're really 
humbly for the word, but they just won't let on because they're in their profession and doing the things that they do. And just by them like coming in my, like I'm going to come in my room and we talking. And then all of a sudden I find out this person is, a, like you said, an empathetic, compassionate person. Wait a minute. But you see, sometimes people expect us to do certain things and we aren't able to do them until we get the right, we get the right stuff. You know what I mean? So just because you're a professional don't mean you're with Christ. You know what I mean? <laughs> but to mm -hmm. me, that's the, that's the most important part that we can, the most important way we could be is walking with Christ. Amen. And, and all else, he said, he'll, he'll make sure everything else you need will be, it'll be, it, it'll be done. So to me, once they learn that professionalism, Christianity, be walking with Christ and put it together, boy, you'll find me in the video. You know what I mean? Cool. You know, I heard one person say, you can't ride the same horse. You can't ride two horses in the same race. No, you can't. <laughs> you can't do it. They love two, they serve two God, love them both. Eight one, you know, I was saying, man, you can't love them both. <laughs> you ain't love one, ain't done. And can't this word, them. and this word, when Brother Wayne was going over so eloquent about yeah. the three angels' message, yeah, it's just, it, it's nothing, nothing but pure love, mm -hmm. you know, it's Amen. nothing but pure love, yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And they said, and I saw, and I think how does it say in Revelation 14, 6? 14, and I saw another, yeah, I saw another angel. Wow. How many times, and I want to say another, I don't know how many it is, <laughs> but over and over and over and over again is God is calling, sending yeah. a message, yeah. always yeah. have been, and he yeah. is down to the everlasting God. And I'm sending another, and another. I'm sending another, yeah. another, and I'm sending yeah. another. Come on, you bro. Know? That's what I was bringing. You know, I was I was expanding on Paul next significance right there. That part right there. Another angel, another, another. One with the same gospel. Yeah. It's the everlasting gospel because it doesn't change. Well, that's it. That's yeah. what you know, that blessed me. Yeah. And yeah. I am so glad it's the God same is message. God. All the angels. You know I mean? yeah. That's wow. it. yeah, that's a good reason. God is a good God. That Lord knows. And, and, and it's shameful that you know that we fall so short yet mm -hmm. he is faithful yes he is you know he is faithful to us mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. have no happiness in the destruction of the wicked of the wicked you know even <laughs> with Satan can you yeah. imagine he still loves, he loves Satan. Amen. He loves Amen. You know, I mean, how, how vile and how an enemy he has that person became toward him. And yet he loves us. And yet he tells us, love your enemies. Love. Pray right. for them that spitefully yeah. use you. Yeah, all manner of evil. Right. Pray for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pray for them. Jesus called those who crucified him his friend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. That's, yes. And that's everything. That is so much everything against our human nature. And when I say human nature, meaning the fallen nature. Right. Can you imagine? Because you human nature is fallen nature. And you must right. be born again. Must you be. must be born again. Hey, do you ever ask yourself this, y'all? What kind of man would lay his life down for a friend? Think about it. I can lay it down for somebody I love, See? but not for somebody <laughs> I hate. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> you, at least you're being real, you're being honest. <laughs> you know, but it's only through the grace of God. It's only, and that's the, yes, grace and mercy. It's only through the grace of God that I'm willing to sacrifice. You know, back in the day, one of the things the Lord always used to teach us, if you went to a job and your friend or your family member, if one person got fired, we all left. You know what I mean? Right, right. We stuck together. And we didn't care how much it cost us and our families. We was going to stick it with the one we cared about. 
unity. And yeah. yet we lose unity. that principle. We lose that principle when it comes to God. Sure do. We sell out quickly. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. We sell out quickly. Some people. And, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I learned. I've learned that uh, if you with Jesus, you're in the majority. <laughs> yeah. You and him, but me and him is the majority. You know what I mean? If the rest of them don't want to go, uh, I feel sorry for them, but I'm going on. I done made up my mind. I'm, I'm going on. I mean, I'm so thankful tonight that uh, Brother Wayne brought this out, this this this, this message out, this word out tonight, because we in a serious time that this 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 third angel's message, these third angel's message, it needs to be spoken on and knowing that this everlasting gospel is still just as powerful as it was when it first started, when he first gave it. So that's why I think we need to make sure that when we minister in whatever you're taking the word, make sure they understand this is the power at your disposal, the word itself. Amen. I'm going to say something way off, and I've been saying something way off all the time, but and I don't want to bring up any Thing bad, but I know some of some of us been hearing about T. D. Jakes and some of the things that's been floating around with him. And I was looking at something the other day when he was at the pulpit, and he was saying, "You know, I will not stand in this sacred place and address this lie. I'm here to preach the unadulterated truth." And um, and then go on to proclaim that the grace of God, you, you know, and one of the th and one of the things about that, that kind of, I guess, not upset me how we, as human beings, mm -hmm. always cling to the grace of God when something may be pointed at us. That might be true. But you you know, brother Tony, let me I got I gotta chime in on this. I mean, I got an issue with that. I don't actually take too kindly to that kind of you know, that kind of rhetoric, that kind of foolishness, because it's like this. They could do anything they want to with this this media and they could use all kind of images and they can make somebody look like, you know, with this AI, somebody said this or that. But you know, I don't really I don't really give that too much credence. I don't give it too much attention as either. So I look at it like this. If you knew God, and you really knew God yourself, personal basis, there's no way you're going to do all this stuff. The Bible says it's better than not, better, better not to have known and not do than to know and not do. You understand? So when you know him, the only way I believe you would do that is you just serving the devil. You just straight out just went all the way off the bar and started serving the devil. But a lot of that stuff, I think, has something to do with this social media realm. You know, how they want to, uh, you know, the Bible teaches God is a forgiver. He, you know, First John 1, 9, if you sin, if you confess them, and who you are. Because we are men, like you said, that all the nature of men. Uh, but if we already go ahead and say we didn't condemn the brother, you know, I don't know all the details and I'm not really concerned with it. But I'm saying that that's that's I think that's why it was the spirit. The spirit was speaking to me on last week, I believe it was about you hear all these different things about people. You gotta be careful how we take and do a prejudging on that thing. You just need to pray about it, pray for them and pray about it, and ask the fear of the Lord to lead you in, in into the truth that you need to know or I need to know about whatever situation it may be. So that's why I don't I don't pick too kindly to that stuff. Because I mean a lot of times these people are trying to describe people's characters. With the social media, we all know that to be true because it has happened to some of us. People try to, you know, make you look bad because they don't like something that you're doing. And matter of fact, with you being serving the Christ, you know, he said you're going to suffer persecution because of me, because of it. You see what I'm saying? So that's why I feel like that's in line with that. A lot of times I don't believe that if it was T.D. Jake doing that, God is a, a he's a merciful, gracious God that forgives us. And we all have issues with sin. You know what I mean? So that's why that's why I look at that brother. Well, you know, I was looking at the fact that grace is something that we use when things are rough. Grace is something we use even when, you know, like the 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 
demoniac man wanted, he was healed mm -hmm. and he wanted to go with Jesus and Jesus said, no, stay here and tell of all the good things that the Lord has done to you. Right, right. And, and, and this is what blows me away. Mm -hmm. And how he had mercy upon you. Yeah. That's grace. Mm -hmm. okay. Be happy about the grace. Right. It shouldn't be grace when the bad times are around. Well, it should know. be, it should be shout, it should be shot from the hilltop on your mm -hmm. good days or your happy days. Yeah, Everything that we live in and move right. in should be the grace in the in, in you know I don't know it shouldn't just be because yeah. something bad has happened. No, but I'm just saying I like I mean I, I, I understand how you think and the things you're saying. You talked about Mary Magdalene a while ago. You know, we even nowadays if they a lot of people if they find out a woman is kind of promiscuous or she's living that life, first thing they're gonna do is act like she's an outcast. They won't receive her, and you know I'm telling the truth, but. We don't supposed to do that. We supposed to be do just like Jesus did. We supposed to forgive her, love her, and tell her you you you're more than that. Okay, so but you know what I'm saying in the world now, right? Even at this moment, people will treat her just like she's ostracized. She's no good. All this stuff, you know what I mean? But we're supposed to love her, teach her. That's you need to change, get your change your life. You more than that. you belong to God. God loves you. For example, right? You know, we um we know we that we are now living in the kingdom of grace. We 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 we're, we're anticipating the kingdom of glory yes. to arrive. Amen. Amen. That's why he said fear fear God and give glory to him. Give glory. Amen. So what you say in Second Thessalonians too, but we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God has in the beginning told you to salvation through sanctification yes. of the spirit, the belief of the truth. Amen. You know, we're until he call you by our gospel. Our gospel. Until the, of the gospel. Of the, until the opinion of the glory of God. Yeah. So we live, we're living in a kingdom of, of, uh, of grace right now. So as Elba was just saying, that, that uh, grace is to be applied at all times in all situations, you know, mm -hmm. not, not just for this specific time. But, but we, we, need, we need his grace. We need the grace of God. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared unto all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, that we should live soberly God and godly in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. So we 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 in a marvelous kingdom of grace, as it were. So that we can so that we can be welcomed into this his kingdom of glory. And we can say hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Amen, brother. Amen. God. Yeah, this has been uh, an excellent um, time here with, with Jesus, you know, so we just want to know him and the power of resurrection. You know, you know, uh, Pastor Jones mentioned one day last week, I think it was last week, he mentioned, um, he asked a question. How many, I think he asked a question like this. How many believe that the National Sunday Law is coming? And um, I don't know if there was an answer given, but the Bible sure speaks it out in, in uh, word for word in, in Revelation for the 13, for the 13. Yeah, this, 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 the Lord tells us it's coming. Mm -hmm. this, the National Sunday Law is, is, is coming, it's written, it's written in the Bible. It's in, it's in, uh, what is it? it's, it's in 13. Yeah, that they should work. Yeah, it says, um, and I beheld another beast in Revelation 13. 13, I beheld another beast. Because we know that, that the first first 10 verses are referring to the papal, the papal beast. But this other beast is talking about the United States of America and apostate Protestantism. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Right. And he exercised all the power of the first beast. And we know that Daniel 7.23 tells us that, that a beast represents a king or a kingdom. And he exercised all the power of the first beast to form cause the earth and then would dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he make his fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. I was studying that too, at that, that point too. 
Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, I'll leave it on. And deceive of them that dwell on the earth. Mm-hmm. By means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. 1798. This this papal beast received a deadly wound. And the deadly wound was healed. 1929. Mussolini. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. That the image of the beast should both speak and cause it as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. We we got we got some, some deep times coming, coming, brother. Deep times coming. Now the question will come then, how many of us really know him? Mm-hmm. But that 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 it will be known as to who really knows him, whether we will be willing to give our lives, their self again. There's there's the 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 the, uh, the papacy again. Self. Yeah. I was on my throne, brothers, stars of God. Self again. Papacy exalts self. Mm-hmm. Exalts all, yes, and that's what that's who we are when we exalt self. Right. When we, yeah. we want to, want to pre, uh, preconceived ideas. Yeah. This is life eternal that the Lord said that 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 I know the true God. We yeah. we need to be made empty of what I think should be. Mm-hmm. So the the image of the beast is is the, is the act of putting man before God. Right. That's not the character that we need. That's not the character of Christ. It's not. And don't you know that, that Christ became man to come into subjection to God? Father. That's him, what, a, what a yeah, what a what a what a what a uh what a man, what love. That's all I can say. What man love. of love. That's right. And that's good news too, Eddie. That's good news. Amen. That's good news. Yes, it is. That's good news. Yes, sir. That's hope. Yes, it is. So the first angel's message is warned against worship of anyone who did not create heaven and earth. That's what the first angel's message preached. Warned against worship of anyone who did not create heaven and earth. And and the the gospel, you know. The message to preach to us to cooperate with the Creator Jesus to put a, to put away sin, and as a consequence of the rejection of the first angel's message, as announced by the second angel, the third angel followed them with a loud voice and dreadful warnings against the terrible events, which followed as a consequence of persistent rejection of the first angel's message. So we see here that the consequence. Of the rejection of the first message, which involves receiving and preaching the everlasting gospel, will in the end, will in the end, the rejection, will in the end, worship the beast and his image. I can't imagine worshiping the beast or his image. We need the mind of Christ. Knowing that he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. He's God. So the, the, the fall consisted of the compromise between paganism and Christianity, which, which developed the man of sin, as foretold in prophecy, mm-hmm. a, opposing and exalting, and exalting himself above all that is called God or that is worship. So papacy sought seeking the support of the secular power, and the result was the papacy, a church that controlled the power of the state, state and employed it to further its own end. This one has further comments from the, from the word on the spirit of prophecy. Well, if you guys want to discontinue, we can discontinue. You know? <laughs> but, but maybe uh, that's how it's always going to be done. So it's usually turn back over to the system to share. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And no, I, I praise God for the study, all the comments on the present, most of all, yeah. the present truth message and I'm really, really um, moved just hearing, you know, it's stirring, stirring me up because, you know, you come from a week of hearing 
all manner of everything but the truth and present mm -hmm. truth. And so when I get in when I get in these forums, it's just like being electrocuted like a lightning bolt. And I'm thankful to God for um, this was from the foundations of the world. He knew that this time and this place and this space and time would would happen. And so I'm excited for all everyone here and our YouTube family and and everyone that will hear this message and um, be transformed. But I praise God for the study. Um, we'll now open it up yeah. to um, if there are any other final comments. Powerful study. God bless you all. I, I would also say thank you, Brother Wayne, for all the comments and participation. Amen. Praise the Lord.